I am so excited to let you know that we, you and I, are going to be kicking off a series today that connects CPTSD with your chakra system. Uh, your chakra system is something that it would benefit you to know about because it's a way of categorizing information that can connect physical issues with emotional and mental type issues with spiritual issues and give you an overall picture of what's happening and provide some interventions for you. So come on in to season five, episode two, and we're going to talk today about the overall chakra system, just a little pinch, and your root chakra, which is number one. See you inside. Welcome to the CPTSD podcast, season five. Oh my goodness, episode two. I am really excited about this one because um, I think that for those of us who have had developmental relational type trauma, knowing about your chakra system provides another avenue that is comprehensive and also healing because there are opportunities within the system of your chakras to make changes in how you experience yourself, others in the world. And that, that perception that we have, which is informed by our senses, is really important when you start trying to figure out how to mitigate symptoms. And then once you've got your symptoms under control and you're feeling like you are kind of a different person and more yourself, then expanding into who are you? without that trauma and that baggage. And so it is a beautiful system. And one of the images that comes from this system for us is the Lotus. And it's about the opening. And it's the opening of you. And it's also the opening of your community. Because when you are in your, as best we can, whole being and most authentic self, we know who we should be connecting with and we are able to follow through with relationships but also with boundaries that make those relationships healthy and so it's a whole new you and so let's get into what the chakra system is um, because you already know about trauma so we're going to kind of step off of that today except when to provide examples and talk more about the system itself so the overall chakra system, and this is a very, very, uh, first of all, white view of the chakra system, but also a condensed and high level. I mean, if this is intriguing to you, please go understand more. And I will be happy to put some ideas about where to find information in the information caption below. So the chakra system overall is about how your energy not only provides you momentum and activation and, you know, forward thinkingness, progression, um, or not, depending on how you use it. Uh, but it also provides you with a lot of information. And so the idea is we have channels of energy that run through us, and those are usually called nadis. And they're kind of like meridians from the traditional Chinese medicine system, right, which is where acu points are from acupressure, acupuncture, um, and EFT, emotional freedom technique, uses that system. AIT, advanced integrative therapy, which we've talked about here before, uses the chakra system. And so uh, studies are happening right now that's showing there's a lot of overlap with this. And, and there's no surprise there. There's overlap with other things too, including the Celtic sister, system and your three cauldrons of energy. And so what I want to talk to you about is that this information has been part of humanity at a really wide scale for a really long time. And so there's value there. And the system itself, the chakra system, runs on an idea of energy flowing through you up and down in a way that is through your core. And um, sometimes people envision that as running between two poles, kind of like electromagnetic energy, which is true. Uh, but the idea is that there's just this flow going through you. And that flow goes through all of these channels throughout your body. Um, we know that there's about 72,000 nadis, so that's a lot. And there are probably more than that that we are completely unaware of. But we're learning and our science is catching up to our natural understanding of, of energy. 
there's also points or junctures where things cross or pool or gather or it's a hub and that those hubs are what we're talking about today when we're talking about chakras and there are seven major hubs in your body starting at the top of your head and ending pretty much at your bottom um, so where your bottom connects to the earth when you're sitting right flat that that is the channel and then the discs or the chakras run in different sections of your body and each of those sections controls different or or displays different information about your life as a whole so if you look at each different chakra and how it's functioning you can get an idea of where some of your issues lie and see things in kind of a gestalt like a whole package instead of this problem this problem and this problem you realize it's a grouping Okay, so today we're going to start with the root chakra because it is the first chakra that comes online. It is the chakra of being here. Like it's our incarnation chakra. It's the materials that we're made out of. It's our genetics. It's the legends that pass through from our generational um, trauma and successes. So that information is all passed to you and starts the foundation of you and your energetic system with your root chakra. And so that is pretty foundational when you think about it within the context of whether you're in a safe environment or not. And that indeed is what the root chakra is all about. Your safety, your survival, and your right to be here on this planet. And so some of the core beliefs that come up when there is distress um, during this chakra's development, which is from inception, you know, incarnation, whenever you think that is, the beginning of, of becoming an embryo, because that's where the genetic information begins to divide, right there. So it's not about a soul here. This is about an energy system. There are connections to your soul, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Okay, so it starts immediately because your, your zygote and your genome, it's all pulling information that's going to make you you, including what successes, strengths, and characteristics are going to help you, um, and some that are going to make things difficult for you. So this time of your chakra being awakened is from conception to about six months old. So during that time, some different areas come online that really create a foundation of who we are. So one of the things is our mentality. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our mentality or our core beliefs, you know, is what I'm talking about. Related to the root chakra, our core beliefs are not only about the worthiness of us, but the worthiness of life and like what it has to offer. And so it's pretty important, I think you can understand, to come in where you are provided core beliefs that are supportive of you developing your own true authentic self as well as strong community connections and showing you that life is pleasurable and beneficial. So when you are in utero, if it is not a safe environment, or if your carrier is depressed or having trauma or violence in their life, it 1000% will impact that embryo, that fetus, that unborn child. So right off the bat, many of us come in with a nervous system that is wired to be hypervigilant already because of our parents' trauma history, right? But then on top of that, we know that people who end up in traumatic relationships frequently recreate that situation in their life trying to resolve it. And so it's possible intergenerationally that you also have been exposed to violence when your mom was or your carrier. There are studies showing that when our carrier is depressed, it is definitely increases our chances of depression. So you can see there's an immediate connection that our perceptions and our experiences are absolutely based on those of our parents. So when we have core beliefs that things are always going to be hard, we're never going to be enough, that is when we would look at some root chakra work. 
All right. Another thing that comes online is our emotions and our feelings. And this chakra is an access point that determines our primary experience and reactivity to other people's feelings. Because our mirror neurons are going like crazy at this time. We are trying to attach and figure out what is going on in the world and the interpersonal experience that we have with our caregiver, whoever that is, our primary caregiver, is really crucial. So this is where we start to become either securely connected and understanding that it's okay to be an individual or that you are an individual or where you might start to experience alienation or enmeshment. So just think about your own life and how this might impact you, knowing what you might know about your childhood or those experiences. Lastly, when we get into a more etheric experience, it's our spiritual perceptions and how they develop during this time is that this is a time and a place where we can realize that we are a model of beauty and divinity. We're an expression of the cosmic consciousness in human physical form. And that is really, really lovely. There's a lot of stories about kids who are still very connected for quite some time after they come through birth and they remember things like uh, past lives and other experiences of soul connections. So this is a time where we are being shaped in our fundamental understanding of a human identity and that consciousness is something that is okay for us to have and express. And so a lot of, a lot of people attribute this chakra to the idea of I am. I am. I hope that this information is helpful to you and we're going to talk just a little bit now about what to do if you realize that you might have some imbalances in your root chakra. And I'm happy to report the skills that come into play here really, really begin with grounding. And so the more you can practice becoming aware of your dissociation and then grounding into the present and then maybe even centering so that you feel solid that is going to strengthen your root chakra, all right? There's tons of information online. If you want to go look about um, what yoga pose or what kind of food to eat, the system is Ayurveda, in case you want to look that up, okay? But mentally, what we're going to be focusing on in this chakra is your experience of general safety. Like, is it okay for you to go out in the world? Is it okay for you to connect with people? Do you feel safe doing that? Do you feel safe making decisions? And do you feel worthy of being here and taking up space? And if you're saying no to any of those things or, you know, crying silently in your car like I was when I learned about all of this, I, f I feel that. So I hope that this information has been helpful to you and that you take on some activity here for yourself and go do a little more investigation. Now, if you want to do that with me, you can head on over to TabithaBirdWeaver.com um, and there is a Karmic Spheres survey for you to take there. Now, I want to warn you, uh, it's more than the seven in bodies. I went ahead and do a, a whole 12 system. So these are going to be chakras that are in your body, but also in your field. And so go ahead if you want and go get that. It's a module and it is free for you to just learn a little bit about how to understand your chakras and then how to take steps to know, you know, kind of narrow down the item to work on, plus how to get some momentum so that maybe you will take those steps. Because remember that part of CPTSD is inhibiting our own healing. That's part of the mechanism. So I really hope that you maybe will take advantage of that module. Um, if you're not interested in chakras and you would like to figure out how to find a therapist and the right um, like clinical therapy for you, please also go to tabthebirdweaver.com and download our therapist guide as well as um, there is a guide for you to purchase there if you would like that is about figuring out 
which therapy most resonates with you and then how to find somebody that does that. I hope that those are good resources. Otherwise, please look up Cindy Dale, C-Y-N-D-I-D-A-L-E for chakra information, especially if you are my skin tone. Also, especially over my skin tone, please find somebody who is native to this practice, which is Hinduism, right? And other forms, some Buddhism. But anyway, my point is find somebody native to the practice that is not just going through this as an academic, systemic, you know, documentation of how it works. Please find somebody with real lived experience. Um, they can be my color. Most frequently, you're going to be better off if you find somebody that is from the global majority. So there's lots of great providers on TikTok and also on YouTube. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to talk about this again, where we're going to go into the second chakra, which is all about relationships. And so you can see where that might be kind of important. I'll see you next time. Thank you.